Welcome to the Wisdom That Breathes channel. Across all our platforms, we try to share wisdom which is relevant and accessible to everyone. But on this particular platform, we go deeper into some of the ancient principles found within the scriptures. If you find some of the terminology difficult or inaccessible, then go over to our Keshava Swami YouTube channel where you'll be able to find other content which is perhaps more relatable. Thank you and enjoy the wisdom that breathes. so much for coming uh, this evening very very happy to be with you um, is this the verse or are we reading from any verse or I'm not sure. um, this the verse yeah yes okay so we should follow this or when you would like uh, another verse you can take another one this okay um, maybe we can speak from give me one second just give me one second. Okay, maybe we can speak from thirteen twenty three. You can change it. Thirteen twenty three. Okay, so today I thought we could discuss a little bit from the thirteenth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. This is entitled Nature, the Enjoyer and Consciousness. And today we're reading from uh, text number 23. Uh, is that okay. Uh, in this Gita, okay. 23, yeah. Okay, so we'll, you can repeat after me. Upadrashtanu mantacha. Bharta Bhokta Maheshwara Paramat Meti Chapyukto Dehesmin Purusha Pada Upadrashtanu Mantacha Bharta Bhokta Maheshwara Paramatme di chap yukto, Dehesmin Purusha Pada, Upadrasta Numantacha, Arta Bhokta Maheshwada, Paramatme di chap yukto, Dehesmin Purusha Pada. If anyone would like to repeat. Upadrasta Numantacha. Upadrasta Upadrasta 
Padrasta Ovasia Anumanta Amita Cha also Bharta Masta Bhokta Supreme Enjoya Maha Ishvara The Supreme Personality Supreme Lord is it? Because this one also doesn't have the word for word. Uh, the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord. Paramatma. Paramatma. The Super Soul. The super soul. Iti. Iti. Also. also. Cha. Cha. And. and. Api. Api. Indeed. Indeed. Bhukta. Bhukta. Is said. Is said. Dehe. Dehe. In the body. Asmin, Asmin, this, this Purusha, Purusha Enjoya, Enjoya para, para, Transcendental, transcendental. Translation, Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Shilesi Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yet in this body there is another, a transcendental Enjoya, who is the Lord, the Supreme Proprietor, who exists as the overseer and permitter and who is known as the super soul. So I'll read the first paragraph and we'll discuss that and then maybe we'll read the second paragraph later or perhaps tomorrow because there's a lot already here. Srila Prabhupada's purple. It is stated here that the super soul who is always with the individual soul is the representation of the Supreme Lord. He is not an ordinary living entity. Because the monist philosophers take the knower of the body to be one, they think that there is no difference between the super soul and the individual soul. To clarify this, the Lord says that He is represented as the Paramatma in every body. He is different from the individual soul. He is Bada, transcendental. The individual soul enjoys the activities. Uh, I think uh, Dan. Oh, now we're going to the introduction. Is it? Uh, okay, Dan. Okay. Okay, so the super soul, the Paramatma, has legs and hands everywhere, but the individual soul does not. And because the Paramatma is the Supreme Lord, He is present within to sanction the individual soul's desiring material enjoyment. Without the sanction of the Supreme Soul, the individual soul cannot do anything. The individual is Bhukta, or the sustained, and the Lord is Bhokta, or the maintainer. There are innumerable living entities and he is staying in them as a friend. We'll read the rest as we go. Srila Prabhupada Ki Oma Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam rupa kadamayam dadati svapadantikam Vande ham shri guru shri yuta padakamalan shri guru vaishnavanscha shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana ragunathan vitam tam sajivam sadvetam savadhutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamsha E Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Pandu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kantara Kantanamostate 
तत्ताजन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्वानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशकलपतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासदिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे श्री प्रभु पाद की So in this verse Krishna is revealing something incredible. You for a moment you can look down towards your heart and you can imagine not imagine you can know according to the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna is right there with you. Krishna is traveling with every single living entity as the super soul. There's not a moment in life when you are alone because Krishna is always there. He's like the eternal CCTV. Krishna is there. Does the Paramatma exist in the spiritual world? No. No. Because here in the verse Krishna explains that the Paramatma has two features. the upadrashta and the anumanta upadrashta means the super soul is with the living entity because the super soul is overseeing everything is keeping an eye is making sure that uh, the living entity is uh, supplied with whatever is necessary to move through this world and the second feature of the super soul is anumanta nothing can be achieved in life unless krishna sanctions and therefore anumanta means the permitter one who uh, allows or sanctions things to happen therefore many many people may desire many things uh, and they may work very very hard but ultimately only if krishna sanctions will that thing come to pass and therefore uh while the living entity is away from the spiritual world trying to navigate this material world then the lord comes to oversee and to permit but once the living entity goes back to the spiritual world once the living entity goes back to their eternal home where they uh, relate to krishna in his personal feature then there's no more need for the super soul and therefore the super soul only exists to accompany the individual soul in this world the super soul is actually perceived by the great devotees isn't it in bhagavad gita you see sometimes we have that picture and what does that picture say vidya vinaya shampane brahmane gavi hastini sunni chaiva swapake cha pandita samadarshina darshan darshan means to see uh, i come from the sanskrit word drishya uh, like here krishna is upadrasta upa means over upadrasta means the overseer so uh, darshan means to see from drishya and therefore the great souls are samadarshina they see everything and everyone equally why is it because everyone is the same not necessarily but everyone is the same in the sense that the super soul is within every single being and therefore whether a cow an elephant a dog or a dog eater uh, the great soul see with equal vision with equal respect because they understand that within each one of these living entities the super soul is there and therefore respect uh, must always be shown to all living entities 
So the great souls are perceiving the uh, super soul. One time Srila Prabhupada was in a news reporter, came to him and he said, Swamiji, where do you get your money from? I mean, these are deep theological questions he wanted to know, you know, deep philosophical uh, queries. Where do you get your money from? Do you know what Srila Prabhupada's reply was? He said, we get it from Krishna. He said, yeah, yeah, I know, I know Krishna and all of that, but specifically, where do you get your money from? I know you, you got the Krishna idea and all that, but where do you get your money from? So Prabhupada said, Krishna is in your heart. And if we tell Krishna in your heart to tell you, give the Swami $2,000, <laughs> you will have to give. <laughs> so he started looking. He got a bit scared. He goes, oh, maybe I shouldn't hang around here too long. You know, Maybe you'll start speaking to my super soul and I'll give my, all my money to you. <laughs> Prabhupada said, we can speak to Krishna. And if we tell Krishna in your heart that you should give the Swami money, then you will have to give. That's amazing. Another time, Srila Prabhupada was in an interview. Rameshwar Prabhu tells this story. And the reporter said to Prabhupada, another deep theological inquiry. How do you pick the leaders in your movement? How do you pick the leaders in your movement? So Prabhupada's answer? Krishna tells me. <laughs> so, you know, this was like on live television on an interview. So, you know, the devotees, they were thinking like, oh, people were not going to understand this. So Prabhupada said, Krishna tells me. So Rameshwar Prabhu was there next to Prabhupada. He said, no, no. What, what he means is that, you know, Krishna tells in the scriptures a leader should have all of these qualities and based on these, then we pick the leaders and Prabhupada looks at him and he says, no, no, Krishna tells me directly. Krishna tells me directly. Because what does Krishna say in Bhagavad Gita? Sarvasya chaham ridhi sanivishto mata smiter Gyanam apohanam cha. Krishna says, I'm in the heart. And for one who has connected with me, from me comes, they can clearly see from me comes all the knowledge, the remembrance, and whatever they need to forget. So if you want it, do you want to hear Krishna in your heart? That would be amazing, no? Imagine like, um, nowadays people like uh, chat GPT, no? Because you can just put any inquiry into chat GPT and then boom. Um, once I put into chat GPT a, a question, I said, uh, now you exist, do I need a guru? <laughs> I asked chat GPT just to see what chat GPT would say. And chat GPT said, uh, no, no, I can give you some answers, but you need a living person who can guide you specifically with spiritual knowledge. That was a good answer. And then I said, uh, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> and chat GPT said, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Try it out. Even chat GPT chants Hare Krishna. It's nice. But however advanced artificial intelligence may get, it can never replace the conscious being and it can never replace the super consciousness or the super soul. So that would be amazing if we can hear Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says there's one quality that if you have, you are connected with the super soul and you can hear the super soul. Does anyone know what this one quality is? Krishna says it in one verse. If you've done this one thing, control the life. Exactly. Jitatmana prashantasya paramatma samahita. Jita atma prashantasya. For one who has conquered the mind, paramatma samahita. The super soul is already reached. Put your hand up if you've conquered your mind. Therefore, we can't hear Krishna. 
the moment that you, because the mind is like the noise you know like sometimes when you hear a radio and you can't actually hear the message because there's too much nowadays you don't have radio but you know all of you know that time generations ago you can't hear the sound because there's too much interference so right now the mind there's too much mental chatter even we're sitting here but our mind is just bombarding us it's so difficult do you know that humans are now officially number one you know in what the previously held record was held by the goldfish and the record that the goldfish held was that it had an attention span of nine seconds <laughs> but congratulations humans are now the winners because it said that the average human being can't concentrate for more than eight seconds because the mind is bombarded like how many of you have an iPhone okay so uh, average iPhone has 64 gigabytes of data I mean you can get a better one as well but obviously we're devotees so simple living high thinking but that you know 64 gigabytes of data on your iPhone you know what they say in the world today how much data the average human brain processes in a day if you add it all up like the social media the messaging the decisions the 300 gigabytes of data is going through the mind every day and therefore people just can't concentrate people are so disturbed People are practically, you know, they, they just can't, their mind is all over the place. It's, the, it's a big problem. So, Jitatmana Prashantasya, because we're struggling so much with the mind, we can't get that clear connection with Krishna. But here Krishna says, I'm in the heart. I'm overseeing, I'm permitting. And uh, I'm on the journey with you. And... Uh, I'm watching very, very closely every single thing you do. Krishna is watching everything. One uh, great teacher, he says, Krishna specifically looks at what you do in two situations. If you really want to know where you are at in your spiritual life, then observe yourself in these two situations how you act you want to know what those situations are and krishna is very much present in those situations number one observe yourself when you're alone <laughs> and number two observe yourself when you're in suffering if you really want to know where you are at, if you really want to understand what is the state of your consciousness, if you really want to understand what is the depth of your devotion, then observe yourself as Krishna does because he's in your heart. Number one, when you're alone. Because oftentimes when we're in public, then we are feeding off the energy of everyone else and because we're so concerned about what people think about us therefore we uh, act sometimes way beyond what's actually really within our heart and therefore uh, that can sometimes also be a good thing therefore actually is recommended in spiritual life that in the beginning one doesn't artificially try to seclude themselves from everyone else in the beginning it's recommended that we do spiritual activity very much around other people because if we were to do it alone with our level of devotion it would be game over isn't it Therefore, like, it's good to chant Japa together. Because, you know, there's some reputation you have to keep that you don't want to sleep in front of others. 
I mean, there's no more bigger harm to the false ego than if someone has to wake you up during Japa time. <laughs> it's amazing when a devotee is sleeping during Japa and then another devotee wakes them up. It's interesting to see sometimes how devotees react. <laughs> I was in the temple once so that someone was sleeping and that clearly he was sleeping. And then another devotee uh, kind of said, like, you know, just kind of, woo, he wasn't too harsh, but he just kind of rubbed him and he said, like, oh, boo -boo, wake up. And the devotee got so angry, he said, what are you doing? He said, but I was just waking you up. He said, I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> he said, you wouldn't know because you were sleeping. <laughs> like, how would you know? Like, you're, you were sleeping, so you can't understand you're sleeping because you're not conscious. So, when we're in public, there's some reputation to keep up. So, although it's not pure devotional service, it's still good. It helps us to become a little strong. Therefore, um, even ashram life, when you live in the ashram, uh, there's no private space. Isn't it? You sleep in the same place as all the other devotees. You study in all the same place as the other devotees. You, uh, you know, you get dressed, everything you do around others. And it's actually very, very good because it helps us to uh, go beyond the meager devotion that is in our heart. But later on, when we become more qualified, more established, then even when we're not surrounded by others, then the devotion never declines. There's actually a beautiful uh, commentary actually given when Krishna was very, very young and uh, Mother Yashoda saw that Krishna turned over for the first time. Then when a baby turns over for the first time and tries to walk, then this is a great cause of celebration because uh, it marks the baby becoming mobile in the world for the first time. And therefore, Mother Yashoda had a beautiful festival. She invited everyone. Oh, Krishna has turned on his back now. Uh, Krishna will begin acting in the world. And so there was a beautiful festival. So it's explained how Mother Yashoda, before everyone came, she bathed Krishna. She gave Krishna a bath to prepare Krishna because everyone would come and bring gifts and glorify Krishna. So then... Krishna was bathed and then he was put in the cot. And so others were, everyone began to arrive. This explained even the demigods were coming. But then what happens is as all the guests are coming to meet Krishna, you know what Krishna does? Krishna uh, pretends to fall asleep. Now generally, after you've have a, had a bath, then it's not that the next thing you do is you fall asleep. That's generally the time when you're most awake. Right? But it's interesting that when the guests start arriving, then Krishna pretends to fall asleep. Do you know why that is? One commentator explains why Krishna does that. Anyone want to have a guess? Why do you think? Because it's rude, no? If someone comes to meet you and someone comes to give you presents and someone comes and then, you know, they arrive and then you just fall asleep. That's not very nice. Why does Krishna do that? One commentator, he explains the reason Krishna does it is he wants to test their devotion. Because some people, they will only come and act very devotionally and give a present and uh, you know give something from their heart only if someone is watching. So Krishna wanted to see if I close my eyes and pretend to be asleep, who still comes in and acts with as much devotion and still gives the gift, not because they want to impress me, not because they want to show me something, not because they want, but just because that love is in their heart and they have to let that love out, whether I see it or I don't see it. That's a very nice point, no? That sometimes we only express our devotion 
when we see that other people are seeing what I'm doing. If nobody's around, if nobody's going to glorify me, if no one's going to see this, then what's the point? Uh, I'll come back when there's an audience. So therefore, uh, the super soul is with us when we're alone. And the super soul is looking, how do we act when we're alone? And the other thing is the super soul is looking very, very closely, what do we do when we're in suffering? In this situation, we also are able to understand what is the real depth of my devotion. Because the devotee knows that um, suffering uh, is Krishna's grace to bring us closer to Him. And so, just like if there would be a small flame and then a gush of wind, then that gush of wind would extinguish the flame, isn't it? But when that flame is like a forest fire, then when the wind of suffering comes, then what happens? The fire goes even bigger. So according to what we do in suffering and how we react to that, we can get a very good idea of the level of our uh, devotion. Therefore, when Parikshit was cursed to die in seven days, he makes a very, very beautiful statement. He said, Krishna came today. But Krishna came today in a different form. Krishna came today to see me in the form of a Brahmin boy who cursed me to die in seven days. That's very, very interesting that Parikshit was able to see that this is Krishna coming to me in a different form. And then what did uh, Parikshit Maharaj do? He just uh, intensified his connection with Krishna. Atma jaya suta gada pashudra vinabandushu Rajecha vikale nityam virudham mamatam joho Jaya, his partner, Suta, his children, Gada, his house, Pashu, all his animals, Dravina, his treasury, Bandushu, all his social connections, Raja, his whole kingdom, every single thing, he just left it. And then what did he do? He went to the bank of the Ganga and he said, now I just invest the entirety of my consciousness in Krishna. In other words, the suffering, the difficulty caused him to take greater shelter of Krishna. They say sometimes we can't understand Krishna. But when we can't understand Krishna, we have the choice to stand under Krishna. You can't understand Krishna. But when you can't understand Krishna, do you take the opportunity to stand under Krishna and take shelter of him? Or do you walk away? That determines the level of our devotion and the depth of our uh, love for Krishna. When you love someone, even when you don't know why they're doing something, your love for them will never decrease. Because you understand, they love me. And that's the highest thing. And therefore, love goes beyond any other confusion that may be there. But when we haven't developed that depth of devotion, then sometimes when we don't understand, then it uh, causes us to become distanced from Krishna. So these are, uh, these are the realities of life. The super soul is with us. The super soul is waiting for us to turn back to him. Krishna Bahir Mukha Hoya Bhoga Vancha Kare Nikata Stamaya Tare Japati Adhare. This is a very beautiful verse by Jagadananda Pandit. He says, Krishna Bahir Mukha. We looked away from Krishna Hoya Bhoga Vancha Kare and we decided, let me try and enjoy. And when we made that decision to look away from Krishna, 
Nikatastha, close by. Maya Tare, Maya stands very, very close. Japati Adhare, and then Maya completely covers you. So Krishna uh, is waiting for us to make the decision to want to escape that illusion of Maya. And all it means we have to do is turn our face again towards Krishna. That means to try to include Krishna in everything we're doing. You know, sometimes it's amazing we can surround ourselves with Krishna but still be expert in ignoring Krishna. You know, once I was in a house and in the morning I was chanting Japa. So you see, for example, you know like sometimes you have a photo frame. So there was a beautiful photo frame on the wall and it was a picture of Krishna Balaram in Vrindavan. So for one and a half hours I was walking in front of that <coughs> Krishna frame back and forth in front of this beautiful picture of Krishna. And you know what I realized after one and a half hours? Every single time I was walking towards the frame Instead of seeing Krishna, Balaram, I was seeing my own reflection in the glass. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> Krishna, Balaram are right there. But I'm looking at myself in the glass. Isn't it amazing how you can be right in front of Krishna, Surrounded by Krishna and still completely self-absorbed. Because still Krishna Bahir Mukha. No, no, I'm a devotee of Krishna. No, doesn't mean that just because you're in front of Krishna, you're still, you're, you may still be Krishna Bahir Mukha. Even when looking at Krishna. You may be looking away from Krishna. And therefore, once we move and we look towards Krishna, then, uh, then we become free, then we become empowered to conquer the mind. And then when we conquer the mind, then we hear the super soul. And when we hear the super soul, then we get all the answers, all the direction, everything we need to go back home, back to Godhead. So therefore, this verse is very, very hope-giving. Krishna is saying, I'm with you. I'm with you on the journey. Don't ever think you're alone. I'm with you. But all I need you to do is cooperate, work with me, let's work together. And uh, instead of following the dictates of your mind, try to overcome your mind, conquer your mind and hear me. And if you can't hear me in your heart, at least begin hearing me through the scripture. At least begin hearing me through the words of the devotees. And when you hear the scripture and the words of the devotees and your mind becomes sufficiently purified, then you'll be able to hear those same messages from within your heart. And then just like Srila Prabhupada and the great devotees are perceiving the super soul, uh, we can also perceive the super soul. And then when you perceive the super soul, you'll never feel lonely. In the world today, the biggest problem is that people feel lonely. They feel like they're all alone. Sometimes you can be in a community of devotees and you feel all alone. Sometimes you can be surrounded by a crowd and you feel like all alone. Sometimes you can have 50,000 friends on Facebook and you still feel alone. Because there's no actual deep connection with everyone. It's like you can be at a bus stop and you can be right next to all of these people. But practically have no relationship with them. Because there's no connection of the heart. So when we connect deeply with Krishna, then we never feel alone. Um, and we feel empowered in every single situation. So in this way, Krishna is giving us uh, a lot of hope. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I guess we, if we have some minutes, if anyone has any questions or comments or anything you'd like. Yes. Uh, just two questions. Thank you for 
Hare Krishna. Krishna has got a sign on his door, do not disturb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good points. Thank you so much. So yes, um, is the super soul a person? Uh, yes. Here Krishna is saying, I'm the permitter, I'm the overseer. That, I that necessitates, there must be a person, it must be an individual personality. Is it an expansion of Krishna? Yes. Krishna um, has unlimited expansions. Advaita, Machuta, Manadi, Mananta, Rupam. Krishna has Ananta, Rupam. He has innumerable forms. And so Krishna expands into every single living entity and accompanies them on the journey. Um, so yes, life after life, while you go in this material world, from body to body, there's Krishna. He's with you as a person uh, in your heart. There's another, uh, there's another story of Srila Prabhupada who says, uh, Yes, Krishna is in the heart. And Krishna is uh, this large. And uh, Krishna in your heart is holding uh, a conch, a disc, a lotus flower, a club. And Krishna in your heart has this bluish uh, hue. And Krishna in your heart is smiling. And Krishna in your heart is standing up. But today he's sitting down. He said, wow. <laughs> Prabhupada said that once. He said, wow, okay. So Prabhupada is actually seeing the super soul. Yes, he's a person in your heart and he's guiding you. Um, so when you pray, who listens? Is it Krishna in the spiritual world or is it Krishna in your heart or is it Krishna in some other universe? Like who's listening? Uh, whoever you're addressing. Uh, whoever you're addressing. Yad yad dhyā ta urugāya vibhāva yandī. In the Bhagavatam it said that in whatever form the devotee remembers the Lord, in that form the, div uh, the Lord reciprocates with their devotee. Ye yatha mam prapadyante dam sateva vajāmi aham. So if you want to speak to Krishna in your heart and pray, Krishna, you're in my heart, you're the super soul, um, please guide me, please. Then Krishna in the heart will listen. And if you want to address Krishna in Vrindavan, oh Krishna, uh, who's in Vrindavan, who's the Rasa Raj, uh, Krishna, I'm praying, then that Krishna will speak to you. So whichever form, whichever way, Krishna can, uh, is unlimited. Uh, it's a personal, he's a personal God, he's a close God, and he'll speak to you in whatever way you surrender to him. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Hi, Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Um, you mentioned that if, if we cannot hear the Lord within our heart yet, and speaking to us, then we can read the scriptures. And so... If we can then start hearing the Lord, it will be the scriptures that He will be revealing to us. But sometimes in my, I've experienced in my life, like just on a much more in sort of mundane type of level, like there was a message and I missed it and I made the wrong decision. It's kind of like, should I take this turn or should I do this job or, you know, something like on a lower level? Could that have been also? Trying to tell me something <laughs> on that type of thing from reading scripture. No, just, no, just oh, you you felt okay, you I, felt an inspiration in your heart. Yeah, and then I then I, I didn't listen to it, and I did the wrong thing, and then I thought, oh, 
Yeah, so the difficulty is that right now there are many voices within our minds, within our being. You know, like sometimes if you're doing sound engineering, there's like a graphic equalizer according to the channel. Like, so certain channels are higher than other channels, so then there's more lights according to where the sound is coming. So right now there's a sound from your own mind. Then there's the sound of your intelligence. Then there's the sound of Krishna. And uh, sometimes we mix up which is which, which message is which. And therefore, uh, it, that's why it's recommended in the beginning until we've conquered the mind. Until you know that graphic equalizer has gone to naught. Then whenever you hear something, if you know that channel is naught, zero, then if there's any sound on the equalizer, you understand that's, that must be the super soul because the other one's cancelled out now. That channel is knocked out. But until that channel is out, when there's sound on the equalizer, you've got to be careful because it could be also the, the wrong channel. Therefore, we listen to Shastra. But even when you listen to Shastra, you can also come to the wrong conclusions. Because you, you can read the Shastra through your own mind. It's said that a Kanista Adhikari sees the scriptures through their emotions. But a Madhyam Adhikari sees their emotions through the scriptures. So therefore, there's a way to read Shastra. So therefore, in the first verse of the Bhagavad Gita, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada explains how you should read the scripture. So what does Srila Prabhupada say? It is said that one should read the Bhagavad Gita very scrutinizingly with the help of a person who is a devotee of Krishna and understand it without personally motivated interpretations. If you read Shastra very scrutinizingly with the help of a devotee and without any agenda, sometimes we have an agenda, I want to drink tea, quick, find a verse, uh, you know that, Sarvasya chai, chai, chai hum, chai, it's there, it's there. <laughs> No, no, you can't go and try to find something there to justify it. You have to try to understand it. So do you remember? You have to understand Shastra number one. What was it? Oh, you already forgot. Very scrutinizingly. Number two? With the help of a devotee. Number three? Without personally motivated. So when you read Shastra like that, then you hear Krishna. And then when you hear Krishna, if you act based on what Krishna is saying, then you'll become purified. And when you become purified and your mind is conquered, then you'll hear that from within. Therefore he said, Dharmasya tattvam nihitam guhayam mahajano yena gata sapantha The secrets of Dharma are hidden where? in the heart of the pure devotee because in the heart of the pure devotee there's only one voice which is permeating the heart of the pure devotee and which voice is that the krishna. voice of krishna and therefore because the voice of krishna is permeating within the heart of the pure devotee the hidden truths of dharma are all within the heart of the pure devotee so then Shastra is being revealed to you from within your own heart. Therefore the great souls like the Goswamis, they just close their eyes and they're writing Shastra. How can you do that? Sanatan Goswami in his trance, you know what book he writes? The Brihat Bhagavatamrita. So what happened is when Parikshit Maharaj heard the whole Bhagavatam for seven days, 
and then you know he was going to get cursed to die. So after Sukadev Goswami finished the narration, Parikshit Maharaj was walking where he was going to eventually get bitten to, you know, cursed and die. But in that gap, on the way, he met his mother, Uttara. And his mother looked at Pariksha and said, You've heard so many amazing things in the last seven days. Can you tell me the essence of what you heard? So then Pariksha had a conversation with his mother, Uttara. Jai Shishi Vijay. Sorry, I. Um, so Pariksha had a conversation with Uttara But that conversation was lost No, it wasn't documented So Sanatan Goswami in his trance <laughs> It's like far out In his trance He wrote down the whole conversation because Shastra, Krishna is the spirit. Vedeshta Sarveda, Ham Eva Vedyo, Vedanta Krit, Vedavit, Eva Cha, Ham. Krishna says, I am the, uh, the goal of all the Vedas, I'm the speaker of all the Vedas. So Krishna is in the heart. He can reveal the entirety of Shastra to you. But uh, you have to allow the Paramatma to fully speak. So you know, like when you have a. Uh, a person who's very wise they may know so many important informations but they won't speak to you unless they know you're ready to listen they know they can understand immediately everything you're doing wrong everything you need to change but they're just staying there they won't say anything until they know that you're open enough to hear so Krishna is like that is that okay? Thank you. Yes, please. What does it mean to conquer the mind? What does it mean to conquer the mind? Yes. So the first thing to understand is that the mind, the purpose of the mind, is to come up with different options. Sankalpa, Vikalpa. Accepting and reject. rejecting. So the mind is coming up with many, many ideas based on previous memories, based on different impressions, based on different desires that you've cultivated. And so the mind is uh, at the moment um, not a very reliable source to follow. And to conquer the mind means instead of identifying with the mind and all of those things that the mind is coming up with, it means to identify the mind and understand that this is just a storehouse of different uh, ideas and impressions and desires that are coming up according to what I've done in the past and I don't need to take it seriously. So to conquer the mind means to place your intelligence spiritualized by Krishna above the dictations of the mind. Does that make sense? Yes. So there's the voice of the mind, all the ideas, and then there's the voice of the spiritualized intelligence. Now which one do you place above which? If you've conquered your mind, it means you put this one above the mind. But if you're the servant of the mind, even though you know everything that's good for you, still you go with your impulse. Yeah. Like it's amazing, people will pick up a cigarette packet. And on the cigarette packet it will tell you, smoking kills, smoking causes cancer, smoking seriously damages your health. And while reading that sign, people still open the cigarette packet and smoke a cigarette. That means you haven't conquered your mind. Because you place that above your intelligence. Does that make sense? 
Is that a question? Yes. So you're saying where exactly is the super soul situated? Uh, so the way it's translated, Sarvasya Chaham Ridi. So Ridi means the heart, the heart region. Yeah, literally the heart region. It said that that is where the super soul is situated because the soul is seated within the heart right like the heart is said to be the center of all energy in the body therefore the soul is situated in the heart region sometimes people say then what but what about when you have a heart transplant does that mean the soul goes out and uh, you know somewhere else now in the laboratory uh, no it just means that the seat has changed like say for example I'm sitting on this seat and you all decide to take this seat out then I just get off the seat and then whatever new seat you bring in but I'm still here so the soul is situated in the heart the heart is the seat and the super soul is situated next to the soul in the Upanishads it's mentioned Dvasuparna Sayuja Sakaya Samanam Riksham Parisasrajate That the soul and the super soul are like two birds on a tree and they're sitting next to each other one of the birds is eating the fruits and the other bird is simply witnessing and watching so because the soul is situated in the heart region, the super soul is sitting right next to the soul and, uh, and, and just waiting. Who is laughing? <laughs> Super soul is gone? Yes, it's not. Um, it's, um, uh, yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's gone. Okay. Um, um, yeah, super okay. soul is never if gone. I have, if, I go, if I had a heart attack, then mm -hmm. my uh, super soul, if I, if I die, uh, go, go with that, with all in the next. Yeah, the super soul accompanies us on the journey wherever we go. And the soul is uh, so uh, um, thousands, uh, thousands per um, of uh, hands. Yeah, so Shastra says, Geisha grasa tabhagasya. Geisha means uh, a hair. Yeah. So Geisha grasa tabhagasya. If you take one. I'm losing my hair now. If you take one piece of hair and you take the tip of the hair, satabhagasya, and you divide that tip of the hair into 10,000 parts, then one ten thousand, the tip of a hair, is the size of the soul. Uh, you had a question? Yeah, um, and then we'll I go to Satish. Just tell me when we should stop, Neil Lamar. I read uh, sometimes that I read something <coughs> at home, like today I read in front of my book with a, a heart transplantation <laughs> that the super soul, it's like a seat, it shows the seat. Yeah. And uh, um, as if it is continued here, the being. And uh, this shows me that Krishna is guiding me to. Oh, you're saying you read it today and then we're talking about it today. 
yeah, therefore yeah, Krishna yeah. is guiding it. Yeah, it's like that. You can, you know, something can happen, and uh, you know, Krishna is his messages are there. He's he's on the journey. He's telling us. I tell I tell you an interesting thing happened to me once. I went to India. So I went to so many holy places, and you know, when you go to every holy place, then you you dip your beads into all the holy rivers and all of that to get all the blessings. You know, we need all the help we can get with chanting japa. So I came back from India with like my beads, which were like went to oh, every holy river, you know, it's like, like a lot of blessings there, you know. Anyway, I came back to London and I was on Sankirtan and I left my beads in my book box. And one day after I came back from India, the first day I was on Sankirtan, someone stole my beads. So that night, I was driving back to the manor, to Bhaktivedanta Manor. I stay in the temple there. So I was thinking, oh, Krishna, you know, my beads, my initiation beads, you know, the ones that were blessed in all these rivers. So then in my mind, I started making a plan, you know, that I'll just, I'll, what to do? I lost my beads. Anyway, I'll get some new beads. I'll ask my spiritual master to chant on them again. And then eventually I'll go back to India again and I'll re-dip them and I'll be, you know. So I was thinking like this. Anyway, the next morning I woke up. So in the manner, what they do every morning in the morning program is they read from Srila Prabhupada's letters. So somehow on that morning, no one was there to make the announcement. So I came. So I came in front and I, uh, to make the announcement. And part of that is you read the letter. So I opened the book of Prabhupada's letters to where it was and then I started reading and Prabhupada wrote in the letter Why have you been so careless to lose your beads? <laughs> this was on the day after So I just like went silent for like 20 seconds, you know, and everyone was thinking like, what's wrong with him? Like, it's, it's a normal letter, you know, I was like, oh my God, like, this is like, this seems very personal to me, you know, like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but, and then Prabhupada wrote in the letter, there is no need to buy new beads and give them to me to chant on again. <laughs> so, oh no, man, that's like that idea goes out the window now as well. And Prabhupada says, once the spiritual master has chanted on the beads, the eternal connection is there. So like that. So Krishna speaks to us in so many ways. Krishna is in your heart. It's amazing. We just have to like, we read this kind of thing, we think, yeah, yeah, I know about that, the Paramatma, what's the next verse? It's amazing, Krishna's in your heart, <laughs> he's right there. But we have to turn to Krishna and not be Krishna Bahir Mukha. Thank you. Um, okay, maybe last question. Is the understanding that our free will determines our actions and our actions determine our destiny? Is that is partially correct? There are three doers. One is the soul, the second one is the super soul, and the third one is material nature. So what you do as a soul is you can desire and act. But then once you've desired and acted, then Krishna has to sanction. And once Krishna sanctions, then material nature carries it out. So say for example, this building. At one point this building wasn't here. So maybe one person desired, let there be a building here. 
But then once that person desired, let that be a building here, then he had to make an application to the government for planning. And then the government gave the stamp, yes, you can build a building here. And then what happened? The construction firm came to this place and they built the building. So who built the building? Was it the man? Was it the government? Or was it the construction company? What's your answer? In one sense, all of them. But unless the government gave the sanction, the other two would be powerless. They couldn't do anything. So like that, many people desire, you know, you're from India, you know, like, I want to be the next cricket superstar. But not everyone out of 10,000, one may make it. Because we can only use our free will and act so you said free will, act, destiny. So it's free will, act, Krishna's desire, destiny. So therefore, people miss out. That's why books like The Secret, The Law of Attraction, Your Consciousness Creates the Reality. It's a good idea. Um, but it's not true. <laughs> because you can desire so many things, but it's not just that by desiring it, you can attract whatever you want in the universe. Because Krishna has to sanction it. And how does Krishna sanction it? According to your karma, and according to what will be good for you. And therefore it's not that, oh, if I just dream, you know, like they say, if you want to be rich, just visualize your wallet full of money. Believe. Manifestation. <laughs> you, you may be hanging around a long time. It may not happen if you don't have the karma for it. Like that. All right. Thank you so much. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki.